I'm excited for this because the Lunar Magic Sorcerer is something that I was super excited for. And the Lunar Magic Sorcerer is something that we haven't gotten yet, or at least a moon flavored kind of subclass, unless you count the Druid Circle of the Moon. And that's that's not really moon, right? I think it still has access to Moonbeam because it's a Druid. But in the end of the day, you just transform into animals better and you turn into elementals. Nothing to really have to do with the moon. So I'm excited for this one. But the question remains, does the Lunar Sorcerer match up to being a moon sorcerer? Does it feel moony enough or moon-ish? Do you get the moon aesthetic when you play it? Meaning that the purpose of the subclass translates into the play style. If we look over at one of my posts that I did weeks ago, right? This was a post that I did because I, I wanted to know your guys' opinion and I wanted to know before Dragonlance came out officially so that people might get their hangups or opinions based on what was given. So I asked, ignoring what the moon sorcerer will look like in the upcoming Dragonlance book, what do you think a moon sorcerer will should be able to do? And here are some of the responses. So as a sorcerer who can use the primal spells the same way as a divine soul can use divine magic, their a signature ability would be a rotating cycle of buffs, new moon boost AC, full boost damage, each buff lasts a round of combat, things like that. And I thought that was kind of fun. So primal magic instead of divine magic, which also makes sense because it's nature, right? Uh, so I'm just going to read a couple of these, then we're going to skip over, and then we'll come back for the rest. Edward G says, maybe the moon phase determines how magical you are. By that, I mean that there could be some sub-options within the subclasses, uh, similar to Totem Magic Barbarian, Hunter Ranger, where you can build a sorcerer to be more tanky and durable, and uh, based on the phase of the moon, which we do get. And then Troper Hagar says, the moon sorcerer is the Twilight Domain Cleric, basically, and someone mentioned that in the chat. The same way Divine Soul Sorcerer is the Light Domain, so Magical Dark Vision, a safe place to rest, that sort of thing. So keep that in mind, actually, and we're, we're gonna start there. So here we have the Lunar Magic Sorcerer. With the Lunar Embodiment, the first feature, we get you learn additional spells when you reach certain levels in this class, as shown on the Lunar Spells table. Each of these spells count as the Sorcerer spell for you, but doesn't count against the number of spells you know. So you get a Full Moon spell with these five spells, the Shield, Lesser Restoration, Dispel Magic, Death Ward, and Rarys Telepathic Bond. New Moon spell with Ray of Sickness, Blindness, Deafness, Vampiric Touch, Confusion, Hold Monster. Crescent Moon Spell with Color Spray, Alter Self, Phantom Seed, Hallucinary Terrain, and Mislead. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can choose what your Lunar Phase manifests its power through your magic. Full Moon, New Moon, or Crescent Moon. While in the Chosen Phase, you can cast one level spell of the Associated Phase in the Lunar Spells table once without expending a spell slot. Once you cast a spell in this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Then we get Moon Fire at first level. It says you can call down Radiant Light of Moon on command. So I think that this might be a replacement for the uh, the Moonbeam spell, which the Sorcerer does not have. And a lot of people, a lot of you have pointed that out. The Moonbeam is a spell, the only spell that has a moon aesthetic. And the Lunar Sorcerer does not have that spell. So I, I don't know why. Maybe they wanted to expand it out and thought that the Moonbeam did not fit into one of these moons specifically. Although, yeah, it would be the full moon because that's, it's a full moon and you have a full moon beam, but I digress. But for some reason it's not there and we don't really get an explanation for it. So instead you learn the Sacred Flame spell, which doesn't count against the number of cantrips you know. When you cast a spell, you can target an additional creature within five feet of the other creature that you target. So you can cast it, Sacred Flame, and then you could basically hit two people if they're right next to each other. But going back to this, what did the, what did Troper Hagar say? It says, if it's the night and if it's like the Twilight Domain Cleric, if it's the moon, they should get dark vision. They don't get dark vision. If you go with a race that does not have dark vision, you have disadvantage of perception under the moon. You're weak under the moon, even if even though you harness the power of it. Okay, so we, we, we go on. On sixth level, we get lunar boons. So your current phase of the lunar embodiment can affect your metamagic feature. So each lunar embodiment phase is associated with certain schools of magic shown here. With full moon, you get abjuration and divination. You get new moon with enchantment and necromancy. With crescent, you get illusion and transmutation spells. Whenever you use metamagic on a spell in a school of magic associated with your current lunar embodiment phase, 
you can reduce the sorcery point spent by one. You can reduce the sorcery point spent for your mana magic a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and then regaining them on a long rest. So, and then we go to waxing and waning. So you gain greater control over the phases of the lunar magic. As a bonus action, you spend one sorcery point to change your current lunar embodiment phase to a different one. So nice, you can now change it instead of a long rest, you can change it like every round, essentially, every six seconds. And then you can now cast one level spell from each lunar phase of the so lunar sorcerer's table without expending a spell slot, uh, providing your current phase is the same as the lunar phase spell. Once you cast the lunar phase spell in this way, you can't do so again until you finish the long rest. All right, level 14, we get lunar empowerment. The power of a lunar phase saturates your being. While you are in a lunar embodiment phase, you also get the following benefits. With full moon, you get a bonus action to shed bright light in a 10 foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. In addition, you and your creatures of your choice have advantage on intelligence and perception checks. So now we're making up for the dark vision. We're, we're up to level 14 now and we can give off light, awesome, and see in the dark now, but it's a 14 level in most campaigns. So get to that, that point. And, uh, and hey, we don't get a dark vision spell uh, either. So there's that. <laughs> but finally at level 14, now while you're in one phase of the moon and one phase of the moon only, now you can see in the dark. New Moon, you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks. In addition, while you're entirely in darkness, attack rolls have dis disadvantage against you. Great, and you also have disadvantage on attacks against everybody else. In Crescent Moon, you have resistance in necrotic and radiant damage. Now the last one, Lunar Phenomenon. As a bonus action, you can tap into a special power of your current lunar embodiment phase. Alternatively, as part of bonus action, you take to change your lunar phase using the waxing and waning feature. This one up here. Uh, you can immediately use the power of the lunar phase you are entering. Full moon, you radiate moonlight for a moment. Each creature of your choice within 30 feet of you must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be blinded uh, until the next turn. In addition, one creature in that range gets 3d8 hit points. New moon gets you momentarily emanate, you momentarily emanate gloom. Each creature of your choice within 30 feet of you must succeed a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC or three or get 3d10 necrotic damage, and have speed reduced until zero until the end of the next turn. In addition, become visible until the end of your next turn, or immediately after you make an attack roll or cast a spell. Now, Crescent Moon, you get magically teleport to an unoccupied space you can see within 60 feet of yourself. You can bring along one willing creature that you can see within five feet as well. The creature teleports to an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within five feet of your destination space. So you basically just teleports with you, which is very wordy, but you get it. In addition, you and the creature gain resistance to all damage until the start of your next turn. Awesome. And then once you use any of these as a bonus action, you can't use it again until you finish the long rest, or you can spend five sorcerer points in order to do it. That's, that is, that is all. That is all we have for the Lunar Magic Sorcerer. So now that we kind of get a gist of what we're looking at, let's see if it kind of adds up. And overall, we're kind of getting the three moon phases a lot. We get a lot of the three moon, uh, we get spells, we get... Uh, different abilities, and then we get a, a kind of a final move at the end as well. So um, let's see, dark and light. Here we have another like play with dark and light. We don't, I don't think, do we, we do get the darkness spell, don't we? Do we not? Okay, well, we don't get any darkness or light spells either. So even though that we are casting light at 14th level, we don't get like a light cantrip or we don't get a darkness spell. We're not, we're not really involving light or darkness in that, which is a pretty evocative of a shining moon or the darkness of night. And it's weird that we don't get those either. So interesting. The ability to punish evil in the name of the moon. Well, obviously we got that from Spectre Spark, obviously. And I forgot uh, Douglas Phillips did the last one. Uh, the one true donut says, I see this as a sorcerer who specializes in meta magic. Moon phases uh, alter different alterations for spells, which it does. So check mark, we got that. And uh, so, hey, we actually do, or we're hitting some of these. So Odog says, heal allies, but when you do so, you hurt enemies around the person you're healing. I don't get where he's coming on, or he or they or she is coming out with that, um, but it's a good note. Trevor Green, Green enough? Are you green enough? I think they should have abilities based on the phase of the moon, where one could get, where one could get stronger up to a full moon, but get weaker to a new moon. That's, that's really cool. That's a, a unique concept. Almost like a power-up system would be very interesting and also evocative for flavors. Maybe ultimately a moon sorcerer could have control over the moon, but I don't know what that looks like. Ooh, so maybe almost like a skyrite spell, but at night where it could be influencing the, the, the moon. Boredom is, is, na is my name says something to do with gravity, light, illusion, and divination spells. Purity and moon phases. Yeah, a lot of people have... A lot of people think purity when they come to the moon and gravity. 
I know that there. Oh yeah, there's the next commenter. V Vain Deer says, "I'm surprised there's no graviturgy magic involved." To be honest, actually, let's. Can we look up the gravity graviturgy tag up on this thing? So here are some spells for the graviturgy here that we can look at. So we have Sapping Sting, Temporal Shunt, Gift of Alacrity, Magnify Gravity, Gravity Fisher, Tether Essence, Fortune's Favor, Immovable Object, Wrist Pocket, Pulse Wave, Sinkhole. Tether Essence, I think I said that, Dark Star, Reality Break, Ravenous Void, and Time Ravage. And so if we look at the Sorcerer again, do we get any of these? No, I don't think we get any of these. And by all means, I think a lot of uh, a lot of these spells, the Dune Nuancy Graviturgy spells are accessed in other compendiums. So they might want to just make it more accessible in just getting like the Player's Handbook plus one, which is Dragon Lance, or which would be Dragon Lance in this situation where these would all be spells that they would get with the original core rule books. So I get that, but it could, if we really wanted to play with like, like the gravity of the moon with tides, if we wanted to play with that kind of stuff, they would definitely invoke some sort of moon aesthetic or new moon fantasy. And we don't get that. Okay, so it, uh, next one says Dylan Morse says, I think you should be stronger at night and maybe be able to summon uh, night creatures. Also really cool, summon night creatures, maybe bats or wolves also to do with the moon. Obviously I'm talking about werewolves with the full moon, but a lot of nocturnal animals come out at night. I don't see that being like a focus of like, hey, this is a, a moon sorcerer and they can summon animals of, of the moon. I could see that being like a circle of the moon druid. And I think that might've been what the circle of the moon druid should have been, or at least just, and, and what I mean is like circle of moon druid's great. Like keep that subclass, it's fantastic subclass, just change something else. Like, Circle of Elementals or something like that. Uh, Edward Humphrey. Oh, here, we do, here we're talking about the, the werewolf. So shape-shifting, alter form, polymorph, and uh, illusion specialties. Polymorph would be an excellent spell for a sorcerer. Do they get it for a moon sorcerer? They do not. They do not get the polymorph spell. Another spell that the lunar sorcerer does not get that maybe they should have. And then the last comment, Dylan Morris says, summon a moon type attack, e.g. moonbeam or judgment attack. <laughs> so we leave off where we began with the lunar magic sorcerer needing moonbeam above all else. But essentially you get some things and you don't get others. You get some phase of the moon that gives you certain abilities for different things. And as you turn into each phase of the moon, but you don't get a lot of spells with gravity, with moons, with shape changing, that you feel would be a part of a, a big part of fantasy and what it means to have moon-like powers. So all in all, it's a great one for Lunar Magic as it stands and a Lunar Magic Sorcerer, awesome. If you want to change it to be more in line with other kind of moon fantasies, I think that would be amazing. But if I get enough likes on this video, maybe I will make a lunar sorcerer that has all of your ideas in it to be more in line with what we kind of look at as a lunar magic sorcerer.